Hi, I'm definitely not Lad, and I'll be attempting to run, to run through Dark Souls Remastered without dying a single time. So the difference between this run that I'm doing right now and the one that I had posted previously with a live commentary is that this time around we'll be trying to use the Black Knight Halberd because I have found that it is a little bit safer, well actually a lot safer, and even a little bit quicker of a run. Now, uh, that being said, since this is a live commentary where I'm explaining what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and also giving some tips, I'll explain why I'm picking Bandit. Well, I'm picking Bandit because I really like the Battle Axe, and in general, it's just a really, objectively, it's a really strong start, uh, especially if you can get away with two-handing it, uh, the Battle Axe. And we also really like the stats that uh, the Bandit class offers of us because we really need to get to a certain uh, break point with stats, so we need 22 Strength and 18 Dexterity in order to actually be able to use and two-hand the Black Knight Halberd. Um, so that's why we like the Bandit. Now the gift, we're grabbing Master Key because we really want to be able to unlock the uh, Valley of the Drakes, or Valley of Drakes I think it's called, uh, in order to be able to, you know, use that as a shortcut without having to go through the majority of the game. Uh, not majority of the game, but you get you get the idea. Basically we're using this, so we're using the Master Key so we can unlock a shortcut, save a bunch of time, and also stay safe. That out of the way, we can get started with the run. The run is a any percent run which means that we will be killing only the mandatory bosses uh, with the inclusion of Taurus Demon and Moonlight Butterfly. Taurus Demon because we need uh, souls early on and it's a really easy boss to do with our setup and uh, Moonlight Butterfly because we want to get the, the Divine Ember and uh, make a Divine Weapon so we can uh, deal with the skeletons in the Nido fight. As far as rules are concerned, the run, uh, the rules for the run are no quit outs, uh, and no uh, glitches, and no summons. I also added a uh, personal rule, which is I'm not allowed to do Duke Skip, because it skips, in my opinion, too much of the area, which is generally a little bit treacherous. And while it isn't considered a glitch, I think it's uh, too much of a sequence break for me to actually allow, because it is not developer intended. All right. Early on, we are very starved for um, for souls, so we need to make sure that we pick up any souls that we can, um, from uh, be it from killing enemies or from just picking up souls that we can then use and gain more souls. Yes, thank you very much. Can you give me yes? Thank you, the Estus and the key. Yes, thank you. Wonderful. Goodbye. Actually, really like him. In uh, in a world like Dark Souls, we need more people like uh, like him. Why is this taking so long? Usually, I just kill him with the uh, running attack. So this time, that took way longer than it should have. But it's not a speed run, so it doesn't really matter all that all that much. I do prefer to get through this uh, as quickly as possible because uh, usually I end up dying at the one point or the of the run or another. So I like to uh, make sure that I don't spend like four hours doing a single attempt. Now for this boss, uh, we're going to do the same thing we did before, which is a jump attack. That way we hit him twice. I found that you can also do like a heavy attack or even just a regular plunging attack will sometimes hit him twice. But if you want to be certain for him to, uh, that he will die, then uh, the, well, not die, but get the most damage. I've found it that it's the most consistent to just use the jump attack. Alrighty. Now to the left of us here is a little hidden soul. Uh, it's worth 200 souls when consumed. And up until recently, honestly, I had no clue it was there. Uh, I don't know how long ago, but a friend of mine and I were playing some Dark Souls just for fun, and uh, we ended up uh, he ended up pointing out, "Hey, there's like a there's like a soul there. Go pick it up." And I hadn't I had no clue what he was talking about, so he showed me, and my mind was blown because I have been through uh, Undead Asylum a few hundred times, most likely. I was going to say maybe thousands, but probably not more than a thousand times. That would be absolutely insane. I haven't gone through it that many times. But a few hundred does seem realistic considering how often I like to restart the game. 
Now here in Firelink, you did notice I went uh, to pick up a single soul before going through my little route where I pick all this, pick up all the stuff that I need. Um, that's because it's just safer to pick up that soul first, then uh, triggering all the skeletons, and then going for that soul. So I'm going to pick that up so I don't have to deal with the skeletons while I'm uh, while I'm maneuvering my way around Firelink. Like I said, we're very desperate for souls in, uh, in this playthrough and this route. Well, early on, we're very desperate for souls. Later on, it's kind of okay. We actually have more than uh, than we would with the alternate route that I had already completed a Deathless on. If you're interested in that, you can check out uh, the other videos on my channel. Feel free. I will definitely not complain. That one also has a live commentary. It also has a very uh, spicy Gwyn fight. Let's put it that way. I don't want to spoil anything because... Uh, that way I incentivize you to look at the video that you're most likely not even interested in. Anyway, we've picked up everything uh, that we need from Firelink. And uh, now it's off to... What, whatchamacallit, what's that place called? Darkroot Basin, there we go. All right, just gonna do some quick uh, inventory management. Gonna use these four. The reason I'm using just these four and not the other soul is because I believe we will be picking up another one of those souls. So I may as well use that once I have both. I don't think I activated the elevator. I am just going to double check quickly because the elevator can be a run killer. I have fallen to my death before. All right, there we go. I didn't take up too much time, but it prevents me from falling to my death. Now here we go. Here's the shortcut that we got the master key for. Very nice. This saves us uh, quite a bit of time and also spares us from having to fight... Um, well, from having to actually go through uh, Blight Town the normal way, which is... We have to go Undead Burg into Undead Parish to grab the key to go the basement key to unlock the uh, lower undead burg and then from lower undead burg we have to go to the depths from the depths we get to blight town and go through blight town and then go down into uh, then go up from blight town and grab that key and then unlock the shortcut that's a lot of places to die let's put it that way and a lot of time so master key saves us all that trouble for just picking it as the starting gift. There's nothing else that I really like from the starting gifts. Maybe the black fire bombs, but honestly, with the with the way that um, the route is planned out, the black fire bombs don't really make much of a difference. All right, just gonna pick up and use this soul. A nameless soldier, large soul of a nameless soldier, I believe. Is the one that we will also pick up again a little bit later on here if we get the black knight halberd now this is where we know if we have a run or not if we get the black knight halberd we have a run run has been activated now let's see if the rng gods agree with us Whew, that second one would have hurt would not have killed but would have hurt all right, give me one of your, give me one of your good attacks. Come on now. I mean, that's that's not one of your good attacks, but you know. Come on now. He's playing hard to get. Okay, I'm gonna parry him. Gonna get behind him, and then I'm gonna knock him off the edge. Seems a lot better than just getting him to maneuver himself. Come on now, give me the Black Knight halberd. Woo! run has been activated now watch me die immediately okay so now we have the black knight halberd and the grass grass shield we can start running around and actually treating this run seriously with some due respect we are going to grab a soul over here which is worth 1000 souls that'll help us a little bit with the rest of the route there's also 
Um, so you'll, you, you'll see me kind of meander through different areas, uh, seemingly without picking anything of importance up, but what we're picking up is just a bunch of souls. Now, I went all the way over here just to pick up one soul. Uh, it's because it's perfectly safe to do so. Nothing will actually charge at you and hit you for picking up that soul. So it's a thousand souls that we got for a very small time investment and no risk to us whatsoever. I didn't manage my stamina properly, so I had to wait for a bit. I'll be picking this up because we'll need the bow and arrow way later in the game, but more about that when we get to it. Alrighty, we'll be killing this little guy. He is not optional. We have to kill him this time around. Because of that, two twinkling titanite. Why is that important? Because the Black Knight Halberd is upgraded with Twinkling Titanite. That's why it's uh, more damage over the uh, Crystal Halberd, which would be more damage if we could upgrade the Crystal Halberd all the way. It would definitely do more damage if we got the appropriate stats and upgraded it, but since we can't get the, uh, the actual things that we need without adding too much time to the run, uh, we can upgrade the Black Knight Halberd more than the uh, crystal halberd. Alrighty. I'm killing all of these guys because um, it's just a little bit of extra souls. There's also another soul here to pick up, which is worth a thousand. I'm not going to hit this one just yet. We're going to wait for this one to run over to us, and then we'll uh, I'll block that. I don't need to take that damage. Okay. Choppity chop. There we go. Now we can bop this one on the noggin. There we go. I used to be horrible at timing attacks onto these brushes when, uh, <laughs> when, uh, oh, I had a brain fart right there. Well, before, I used to be horrible at timing them, but after running through this area a bunch of times trying to get, um, trying to get, uh, this run done, I am now somewhat proficient at hitting them after they get up from the ground like that. The reason I don't, uh, what I'm actually talking about is when they spread out from the ground like that, uh, they actually, you can't actually hit them, they're immune to everything, so. All right, let's see what he does. He just kind of wiggles around, okay. Alrighty, we don't actually need to talk to you, so I'm just going to go away. I almost went to buy <laughs> Titanite shards because I'm so used to my old run. Now here we're going to activate this bonfire. I'm also going to sit here and use a bunch of souls. There we go. We're going to put this uh, these souls into strength up to 22 points. And then the rest goes into dexterity. Now our next thing that we want to get is uh, we want to get to 18 dexterity. We're currently at, I believe. Ah, we are currently at, uh, what is that? Where is it? 12. Wow. I don't know why that took me so long to just look at. Anyway, <laughs> we're at 12 dexterity, so we need six more levels. That's why we're going to clear this whole area. We're going to make this real quick. We're also going to free, uh, what's his face? Ow. We're going to free, uh, Lautrec. We're also going to kill him once we're back down in Firelink Shrine. I should have actually been backstabbing these guys so that I get a little bit more souls. So we're going to free Lautrec, and then we're going to go ahead and, uh, kill him for the ring. This might be a mistake. Owie. Owie. I'm alive! Okay. Oh, nah, nah, you don't get to do that. That's not fair. I didn't drink. You don't get to drink either. Fair duel. Come on now. I'm gonna pick up this Titanite shard for way, way later. I'm gonna not mess around. I'm gonna actually use the Estus. Being at one hit point is not my idea of a good time. I don't even have RTSR. Why would I do that? Bop! The reason I move up a little bit like that is because if I just try to parry from that far underneath him, uh, I'll just end up doing a swing 
which is suboptimal. We want to do the parry so that we get uh, guaranteed kill. We don't have to mess around with him anymore. All right. Luckily, even with a plus one battle axe, these guys still die from one one-handed swing. Let's see if we can't take care of all of them. I'm doing 69 damage. Nice. Ah. Okay. Luckily, this guy wasn't, and this guy is not buffed for some reason. That one we hit for 68. Find that questionable. Okay, you do your spell. What I really want him to do is to back away from that edge. Or he's going to jump down. He's not going to jump down. Very nice. We do not want to get hit by that. The reason being, uh, it will one-shot us. That's good enough of a reason, right? But yes, if we get hit by that forward lunge of his, uh, it will stagger us. And for some reason, they decided, they by they I mean the developers, decided that that lunge, like that stab thing, should hit you three times. And I am not a big fan of that. I can tell you that much. Ooh, that is I am that worked out now. This is what I wanted to do when I saw him parrying when you do a jump attack They can't parry that so just hit him with a jump attack. I got lucky there and uh, When I failed to do the jump attack and it actually uh, Did just a regular heavy attack He stopped parrying so like I said, I got I got lucky. I Will count my lucky stars all right, he is stuck and without recourse. We're gonna open that up for him. And we're gonna head down to Firelink Shrine to kick him off a ledge. We befriend him only to betray him. What does that say about us? See, I wish I could make a character that's as pink as these hollows. I don't know why, but I feel very powerful when I have a pink character. Just power coursing through my veins. Use this while we're on the elevator. Don't have any other souls. We can get rid of the brigand armor. Don't need that. Might as well get rid of this while I'm on the elevator. We also don't need this anymore. All right, cleaned up the inventory just in time to get off the elevator. Maybe a little bit slow, but still. Now what we're doing is we're gonna, like I said, uh, kick Lawtrek off the edge, get that ring level up a little bit more dexterity, and then head into Undead Burg to get the remaining souls that we need in order to level up and be able to actually use our Black Knight Halberd. Be gone, foul demon. All right, reinforce. Okay. Now I just realized uh, I was about to use a Homeward Bone, but I hadn't sat down over here, and that would have been really bad. Why do I want to use a Homeward Bone if I'm going to end up over here? Well, it makes the actual items from Lotrek spawn. And then we can actually pick up the humanity, uh, the five humanity that he drops, as well as the uh, Ring of Favor and Protection. There it is. Lovely. Just going to quickly equip that. There we go. Now we can head over to... Actually, I didn't level. I said I would level, and then I didn't level. This is such a mess. Anyway. Okay, we need three more levels after this, and then we are ready to use the overpowered Black Knight Halberd. I'm very excited. I love using the Black Knight Halberd. The moveset is amazing. The damage is ridiculous for this early in the game. It's just a great, great weapon. Ooh, I thought I was going to be a little short on that. Nope. While we are here, we're going to go ahead and pick up the uh, ring over here. The reason I'm picking it up is because since we're not doing Duke Skip, if you remember I said one of my rules is that I am not allowed to do Duke Skip, uh, I am going to go ahead and uh, somehow I dodged the initial part, but the blood explosion still damaged me. Anyway, uh, I'm going to pick up the Ring of Sacrifice so that... Uh, if we manage to get a no curse death from uh, Seath, we can uh, we can keep our souls. Please don't jump at me. Thank you. Wait for him to topple over. There we go. 
The reason I say, oh, excuse me, hiccup. Um, the reason I say wait for him to topple over is because uh, sometimes he likes to push me off the map with his weird death clipping animation thing. So, prefer not to uh, not to have to deal with that. Alrighty, we are in Undead Berg. The Berg of the Undead. Somehow both of us missed each other. So that's uh That's an interesting situation. Okay, large soul of the lost undead. There's this one guy, we're gonna get hit by him because uh, you know, walls are our worst enemy. There's another soul over here. That's 200 souls. Like I said, we're very start for souls, so we're just gonna go around picking up as many souls as we possibly can. As quickly as we can, while staying as safe as we can. And we can do it, I believe. That one humanity is of no consequence to us. We don't really need the one humanity, so I'm not gonna bother picking it up. Just gonna keep moving forward. Choppity chop. There we go. I don't want them following me around and hitting me while I'm trying to deal with other enemies, so I chop them up back there. Okay, dragon's gonna come through. How dare you interrupt my Estus? So rude. All right, let's see if we can chop this guy up. Huh. Yes, we can. Oh, this guy got us. Did not even see him jumping because my character was in a weird portion of the screen. Ah! Good thing I am slightly over leveled for this and I have more health, so I don't have to worry about dying here because these guys are uh, they're giving me a hard time I'm getting hit a lot. Alrighty. Moving on up. Do not want to have to deal with that. There we go. That guy might have dropped a uh, Titanite Shard. I Most likely it was not a Titanite Shard, so I'm not going to bother picking that up. I did just kill a guy through the wall with an attack. That's because if you can get an attack to go through, it'll actually do damage along its entire intended trajectory, even if it hits a wall before it gets to the end of that trajectory, so. Fun facts with Vlad. Or definitely not Vlad. All right. Choppity chop, don't want to get shot in the back. Uh, I guess I'll take care of these guys up here just to pick up that little extra soul that we have over there. Gotta make sure I do actually hit this guy. This guy will always run down. This guy will, if he throws a firebomb, he'll hit that pole. So you don't have to actually worry about him too much. Alrighty. Now, this next group sometimes gives a lot of new players trouble. Here's one tip if you're a new player. Walk down slowly, and you can make it so that only one of them actually attacks you. And you can, makes it a lot easier to, to deal with these guys. And with the spear hollows, just kick them. Uh, if you're not using a curved sword, you have pressing forward and R1 will do a kick, and that way you can just kick away their shield, and uh, they are left vulnerable to your attacks. We're just going to try and backstab, and we're going to fail backstabbing, and now parry god, <coughs> as I get hit by the first attack he does. All right, let's go. Come on. Nope. How dare you? I'm going to drink in his face to assert dominance. Definitely not because I'm scared to die. I said no. He tried to make me go to respawn, but I said no, no, no. Now, in most playthroughs, um, I don't care at all about the uh, blue tier stone ring. But considering this is a deathless run, it may just save our life at some point. So I'm just going to have it equipped because otherwise we wouldn't really have any ring equipped and that's not good either. So may as well use that free ring slot to, to do something with it. I just realized that this chest over there, I did not actually go to pick it up. This is something I often do. Is uh, I forget about that chest. So we're just going to go back here and pick up the three gold pine resin. 
Uh, we're really only going to use one gold pine resin, and that is on the upcoming fight. Don't really need anything. Uh, we don't really need it for anything else, because every other fight we'll be killing uh, things with the Black Knight halberd. Now, in this barrel, there is a lizard. So that's another two Twinkling Titanite. Now we can get to plus three uh, Black Knight Halberd very early on in the game. We're not going to have the souls right away, but after Gargoyles, we'll have the souls and we'll have a plus three Black Knight Halberd. Whew. They're trying real hard. Oh, he got me in the head. How dare you? Leave me alone. I'm just trying to kill the boss in the area. Just going to quickly equip the gold pine resin onto my quick bar. Alrighty. Now, um, this boss can be a huge challenge to you know new players, but there is a tactic even new players can use to kill it very, very easily. And that is to trigger it, run back over here, climb on up. And make sure you use the gold pine resin because it adds quite a lot of damage because the demons in the game are weak to gold pine resin. And then you plunge attack him. And there you go. I have a lot of strength, so it's half his health. But it shouldn't be much different for you either. Oh, He moved backward in just the right way to not get hit by my thing. Somehow I did not get hit by his thing. There we go. Like I said, not a huge deal. You can also run back and forth to lure him over here and then run back over there to pick up, to, to run up the, uh, what do they call it, the ladder again. And then plunge attack him to death over and over, but I chose to just uh, duke it out with him. And I got, I got punched in the face for it. Okay, we are just going to quickly activate the Hellkite Drake. And we're going to run back over here where it's nice and safe and not on fire. Take this time to actually use some souls. Maybe that was a little bit overkill. Maybe I didn't have quite enough time to do that. But now you get to run safely over to the bonfire. And you get a bunch of extra souls as well. We actually don't need to go down to this bonfire, I just realized. So I'm just going to Homeward Bone, and this should take me all the way back to Firelink, where I can now use all the souls that I have and get uh, get the last few levels that I need in order to be able to use the Black Knight Halberd. Now let's see. One, two, three. Bada beam, bada boom. Now the bad thing about the Black Knight Halberd right now is the fact that I need to actually use nothing but it. Otherwise, I will fat roll. So, to prove my point, I'm going to put on the grass crest shield. And there you go. Fat roll. Well, not fat roll. Medium roll, I should say. But, yes. So, one remedy for this would be to get the uh, Havel ring. Uh, Havel's ring. Since we do have the master key and we do go through Undead Berg. However, I, uh, I hate fighting Havel because I haven't practiced parrying him. So I will not be doing that. And also, because later on in the game we're going to put more endurance, uh, put more points into endurance, and that'll make it pretty easy to actually deal with uh, with the equipment load because we'll be able to use the uh, grass crest shield as well. Nope. Got to switch to two hand before you hit him, otherwise you get that wet noodle damage. As you can see, this does ridiculous amounts of damage. It it just did. Uh, 641 I think I saw it also has really good range there's no channeler this time around so I'm just gonna keep uh, bonking them sending them to horny jail each and every single one of them there we go that's a pile of corpses right there now we're ready for the actual gargoyle fight with this weapon honestly it's it's really, really easy unless you get just very unlucky with uh, mistiming your dodges or anything like that. Uh, I'm still going to try and drag the first gargoyle away all the way over here. That way I have more time if something goes awry. I have more time to actually deal with the first gargoyle before the second one actually tries to kill me. So we're going to come over here. He's going to do some sort of jump attack. He's going to do that. Roll to the side. Bonk him on the noggin. Dodge one attack. He's going to do another one. Dodge through that. 
Bonk him again. He's gonna dodge. Bonk him again. He missed that, I think. I didn't dodge it. Oh, that's one down. Okay, that was a little bit messy because he just kept hopping all over the place, but it worked out. Breathe fire. There you go. Perfect. See, he listens to my commands. He knows better than to question the Vlad. Okay, so that's, that's Gargoyles. As you can see, absolutely ridiculous amounts of damage with the Black Knight and Halberd. Uh, the reason I say it makes the run safer, I had said that when we were cre uh, in the character creation menu, um, it's just because you kill things so quickly, there's less time for you to actually make fatal mistakes. So, yeah, that's how that works out. Okay. Ring-a-ding-ding-a-ling. -ding Sounds like a euphemism, but it's not, I swear. I just like the way it sounds. No, 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 no. Ha, I'm kidding, actually. I know I'm going to survive. Did it freak you out? I hope it did. That was the idea. Now we're going to buy one Purging Stone in case we get cursed by Sif. Not Sif. Seath. Excuse me. I keep mixing the two up, honestly. Uh, okay, there was something I wanted to do. Yes, I wanted to switch this with... Well, what is it? There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. And now we can use a Homeward Bone. Ooh, no. I almost made a mistake. We do not use a Homeward Bone. We instead go down to Andre. And we get our lovely, lovely, lovely Black Knight Halberd to plus three. That's right. We've killed two bosses in the game. Three if you count Asylum Demon. And we're already at effectively a plus 13 weapon. That's absolutely insane. And that is... The power of the black, early Black Knight Halberd. The reason I say plus 13 is because it only goes up to plus 5, which means that it's effectively plus 10 as soon as you get it, which it makes sense, honestly. Look at the damage we're dealing. Um, so getting it to plus 5 makes it plus 15 equivalent. And getting a weapon that strong this early in the game absolutely devastates the early bosses. Alrighty. Talk to you. We're going to reinforce our Black Knight Halberd to plus three because we've killed three Titanite uh, Crystal Lizards, I should say, and that's... No, two, excuse me, and that's four of these gems. Now we're really going to quickly go over to purchase item. Grab a weaponsmith box. The reason we're grabbing that is because we want to be able to upgrade the Black Knight Halberd later on without having to actually wait for or wait for go to Andre. Alright, we're gonna use a homeward bone, we're gonna end up back in Firelink, and then we can make our way down to uh, Paradise City. The grass is green and the girls are pretty. Won't you please take me home? Um Yes. You might have noticed I switched, I removed my weapon and I put on the uh, Grass Crest Shield. Why, why is this happening? Well, it's because I'm going to fist only kill Quelag because she's that easy of a boss. Of course, I'm joking. I'm actually going to just use the uh, Grass Crest Shield to get that extra stamina regen so I can more quickly get through to Quelag. Because I don't actually need to fight anything until I get to Quelag. I don't need to hit a single enemy. And that is wonderful, if you ask me. Once we get to Quelag, we will, of course, switch back to the Black Knight Halberd. I do not actually intend to uh, fight her with just my fists. That would be... Um, I am not that kind of runner. Okay, they're both just yelling, I think. Okay, let's see what this one does. He's also angry. He's not yelling. I think he just did that weird smash that doesn't actually ever get close to hitting me. That's quite all right. Got our plus three Black Knight Halberd ready to actually destroy Quelag. And you'll see what I mean. We are going to rip through her really, really quick, especially if you compare it to how, quick, um, how long it takes us to kill her with a plus five battle axe, which is the other run that I did. It is a world of difference. Let me tell you that. Alrighty. I'm just going to quickly check. 
Uh, I can drop these items. Don't need that. Don't. I need all of those. Need all of that. And there we go. We're at the bottom. I like to make use of these elevators and stuff where I'm not actually actively doing anything to manage my inventory. I like to keep a clean inventory. That way I don't have to uh, spend more time menuing when I actually need to grab something from the menu. Alrighty. Now if we had a purple moss, we could get rid of this poison, but it doesn't really matter much because we are going to, unless something goes horribly wrong, we're going to kill Quelag before the poison is even done. And in a really good uh, good case, we're going to kill her before the poison reaches about a third of the way, so. Alright, I'm going to first put on the weapon before going through this, because when you do go through instantly, this starts, so you don't have the actual full duration to do menuing. And I learned that the hard way, and I had to panic switch weapons while she was running at me. Okay. Oh, wonderful. She's going to give us the... The big, the big one, the big lavas. Okay. Punish that with a running attack. Punish this some more. And do stabby stab. We're gonna punish, and she's gone. There we go. Right about halfway through the poison. Now the difference is absolutely monumental, and we're just gonna switch back to this because for. Ceaseless, which we're doing next, we also don't actually need to hit him a single time with a weapon. We can just punch him to death. And this time I'm not kidding. I'm actually going to punch Ceaseless to death. If you've not seen how to do Ceaseless, uh, uh, the uh, developer intended way, then uh, stick around just a little bit longer for me to fall down with my menu open for no reason. Hold on. Let me chug one. I don't want to die to no poison over here. That would be real sad. Anyway, the developer intended way to do ceaseless is to actually um, grab the items on the far part, like really far away from where the uh, thingamajig is. The um, oh, the fog gate. My brain is just not cooperating this run. This commentary is uh, not top tier. I apologize. But yes, uh, the way you deal with the uh, ceaseless discharge is, well, you're either going to shoot him with a bow and arrow or sorceries, or if you're feeling masochistic and have a lot of attunement slots, you're going to do pyromancies. The reason I say that is because pyromancies probably don't do much damage to someone who's oozing lava out of every single orifice. But yes, uh, you can deal with him that way, and you can also beat him up when he like slams with his fists or whatever, or arms, I don't know. Uh, you can hit those. But the developer intended way, in my opinion, it's developer intended. It's definitely something that the developers had to put in the game for it to work. So that's why I say developer intended. Um, way to kill him is uh, to, oh, excuse me, grab the items that I like to say he's guarding. And then run back to the fog gate. There's actually a specific way to do it. And I'll show that just a moment here. And grabbing the items, anyone can walk up and grab the items. That's not like a 400 IQ play, but let's grab the items. Really good armor set. Recommend using it if you have the equip load. Now we're going to wait here for him to do that attack so we don't get hit by it. And then we're just going to start running. And we run all the way over to the fog gate. If you manage your st uh, stamina well enough, there is no way he can he can catch up to you. If you don't get hit, you should be, by that first attack, you should be golden. Here we have the uh, Grass Crest Shield, which is improving our stamina regeneration, so that helps a lot. Just gonna go over here. I'm gonna take this moment while we wait for him to catch up to use the Soul of Quailag that we just got. Alrighty. And then you just beat up his hand until he has to let go. There we go. And that's Ceaseless Discharge. We're going to wait for the cinematic. So we are guaranteed to get the items and everything. There they are. And we're going to use a Homeward Bone. So why am I using a Homeward Bone if there's... Um, 
from here instead of grabbing the bonfires nearby? Well, because it's way safer to go back down into Blight Town than it is to get out of Blight Town. So we're gonna just go back down there again later on. Now, after reaching 20, uh, oh, excuse me, after reaching 27 or 28 strength, you can start putting points into vitality and endurance. Um, 27 or 28, whichever you prefer. Um, both are both are good points. Uh, you can start just putting points into, like I said, endurance and vitality. The reason for this is we will be two hand, almost exclusively two-handing the uh, what you it? Oh Jesus, the Black Knight halberd. I am just pulling blanks all over the place. Sorry, this this commentary is a mess. Anyway, uh, we're going to be almost always two-handing the uh, the Black Knight halberd, and what does that do? Two-handing actually increases your strength by about fifty or so percent of the strength that you have. So if you have ten strength and you two-hand the weapon, you have fifteen strength effectively. That's why, even though the requirement, let me actually show you while I'm talking about it, the requirement for Black Knight Halberd is 32 strength, but we were able to wield it with 22 strength. Why is that? Because if we get 50 more, we have 33 strength. That's why you can two-hand some weapons while not being able to actually use them effectively when you're just one-handing them, because you're increasing your strength and you're getting that requirement done. Alrighty, take a seat here. Didn't actually really need to do that. But may as well while I'm there. And again, we're just gonna run through this area. We do have to hit two NPCs before we have to kill anything, but we don't have to kill them, we just have to hit them to get them to move out of the way. And you'll see what I mean when we get to that point. But for pretty much everything else in Sin's Fortress, we are just going to be uh, running. Wait for that to pass. I like to approach him from the left hand side and then run around the right that way. I guarantee that there's enough room for me to run through. And this snake lady we might have to dodge once. Wonderful, that worked out just right. We activate the trap in case she dies to it. That's an extra 500 souls. Who knows, might come in handy. We wait for the boulder to knock this guy out of the way. Keep running up this path, go through the fog gate. Now this is a really critical area, you don't want to get staggered here. Otherwise, the boulder will catch you while you're on this part of the path. Mash the roll button so we don't get staggered, and we should be able to make it onto the elevator just in time. There we go. I've been through this place more times than I care to count. Alrighty. We're going to be very brave here. And we are going to run in front of where the boulder is supposed to go. Because, uh, as the kids say, YOLO. Do kids even say, do, do people actually still say YOLO? I don't even know anymore. I have no clue. Now this is the lady we need to punch. And the reason we punch her is because otherwise she will body block you and you will not be able to get through. This worked out wonderfully. We timed that just right so that we make it and we don't have to wait for these to go through. It's not a big deal if we, if we have to wait for those, but we could get shot in the back with some lightning by one of the snake ladies. And that's never a good time. Now the soul I just picked up is worth 8,000 souls. That's exactly why I picked it up. This uh, might be an extra level for us further down the road. And I never say no to extra levels. In this run, I'll be putting points into Endurance up until 25. Uh, after getting 28 Strength and uh, 18 Dexterity, of course. And uh, so yeah, 25 Endurance. And then after that, we'll also try and get the... Uh... Oh, nice, he moved out of the way. That was the guy that I wasn't going to punch otherwise. Okay, gonna grab this. Oh, he's angry. Ah! That's horrifying. I was not ready for that at all, but he was ready for me. I can say that much. Bonk, and just one more bonk. There we go. I kill him because I don't want to have to deal with him throwing firebombs into the area where the boss is. 
Now, there's some specific things that we need to do here. Um, the thing with this boss is, if you deal a certain amount of damage below his knees, he will get staggered and you can actually maybe knock him off the ledge. But the only way that I can actually hit him with the Black Knight Halberd below the knee is to do a roll and then actually hit him. And after that, we have to do more of the same. Aw, oh, unfortunately we didn't get him to go off the edge, but luckily the Black Knight Halberd does so much damage that I really don't even care that I didn't knock him off the edge because it only takes a little bit longer to kill him otherwise. As you can see, we're doing absolutely ridiculous amounts, to da amounts of damage. So we can just beat the snot out of that guy. Does he actually have snot, considering that he's like a, a construct? I don't know. Maybe some lore buff can, can explain that. Maybe I should call Avati Vidya and, and ask him, does Iron Golem have snot? Iron Golem, prepare to cry. With or without snot. Alrighty. Now here we're going to put a bunch of points into Endurance first, because if we put a bunch of points into Endurance, then we're able to actually uh, use both the Shield and the Black Knight Halberd at the same time. And that'll work out wonderfully for us, because then I don't have to do these crazy switches. We're going to get to 25 Endurance. And let's see, that should be enough for me to fast roll. It is indeed enough for me to fast roll. Wonderful. Okay, now before I used to go over there, uh, shoot the Mimic and then grab the, uh, throw a Lloyd's Talisman at it, put it to sleep and then grab the Crystal Halberd. But with our route, we won't be able to upgrade the Crystal Halberd enough to make it stronger than the Black Knight Halberd. So there's actually no reason for me to go and do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, keep on running. Just keep swimming. Alrighty. Need to ignore that guy. Don't need to deal with any of that. He's far too upset for me to deal with him. Alright. Just gonna just realize that I should put on the longbow. I can still fast roll. Wonderful. Bonk that guy over the noggin. You're gonna throw a dagger? You're not gonna throw a dagger. Wonderful. Usually he throws at least one dagger before he tries to actually run at you and hit you, so I was a little slightly surprised there. Uh, a surprise, but not an unwelcome one. Alrighty, this guy is most likely going to throw some daggers at us. That's fine. Let's see if he tries. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. That's. Best case scenario, he's going to try and do a jump attack. Jump attacks work weird in this game where they don't actually detach you from the ground. So he's going to jump over an area where there is no ground. And, well, you saw what happened. He fell to his death. Now we're going to try and get this guy to do the exact same thing, but we'll see if he throws a bunch of throwing knives at us instead. Okay, only two throwing knives. Very good RNG. Let's see if he jumps to his death. He does not jump to his death. But... Uh, he has met it either way. Okay, the reason I stand still and stare at them while they're dying is not because I'm cruel and enjoying the fact that they're dying, although that might be the case, but the real reason I'm doing it is because I want to, um, I want to make sure that I, basically when they're dying, when they're doing their whole, you know, dramatic thing, uh, you can't actually go through them. They, they have, they still have clipping, so you can't actually get through. And it has happened to me more than once in my past that, uh, what the heck are you doing? Jump again. Jump again, I dare you. Anyway, uh, it has happened to me more than once in my past that they uh, actually end up pushing me off the, uh, off the rafters. That should stagger. This should almost kill. There you go. Usually he jumps at me, but not from that far away, and then he basically just falls down here, and I plunge him from over there, and he's he's a goner. All right, we're just going to get quickly rid of this. We are going to keep that set that we have from Ceaseless, because it has very good fire resistance, and that'll come in handy in Bed of Chaos, in case uh, in case some stuff uh, happens that I don't, uh, that I truly hope does not happen. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay, that's a good attack. I can just keep sprinting. If he had done the swipe, I would have to roll so that I don't get hit by it. 
gonna go uh, we're gonna hang out in the corner over here we're gonna wait for him to start resetting we're gonna give him a little bit of extra time instead of running right back because he has actually re aggroed on me when I've run back before he went all the way back or back enough I guess so I don't want to have to deal with that I mean this guy if we shoot him he's just gonna fall backwards to his death guaranteed and this guy if he jumps up into the air like that we have to actually okay um, I was gonna say we have to delay our jumping attack but I delayed it a little bit too much and I ended up paying the price as you can see which is half of my health there we go this time I did it right okay I'm ready for the next part with another couple of these and I'm gonna roll down this and walk backwards why am I doing this uh, because this thing is weird and sometimes it treats it as if you're falling and not walking on a surface while you're on it. So you end up taking a bunch of fall damage for no actual reason. You know, just Dark Souls things. Just gonna get rid of this guy. Alright, time for the Anor Orlando Archery Club. Wow. Wow. Every day is something new with this game. I have never been hit there before. Never in my life. I mean, it's not a big deal. I didn't get killed, but that is, you know, every single day I learn something new. Anyway, we're going to run up here and wait for this guy to shoot the wall over there. It's wonderful. And then we're going to roll through a projectile. Stand in the corner. This guy can't actually reach you. We're waiting for him to pull out his weapon. We're going to parry, walk up a little bit, switch to two hand and stab him in the gut. There we go. That takes care of the Anor Londo Archery Club. It cost me Anestis, I can't believe it. Anyway, uh, in my previous run uh, with the Crystal Halberd and uh, the Battle Axe, I would go and grab that bonfire. Here I do not grab the bonfire because I have more than enough damage to take care of Ornstein and Smo. They can, of course, still kick my butt. You know, as with most things in this game, you can, uh, you can be cocky all you want with your damage, but you're going to get uh, wrecked on Ornstein and Smo. So, once we get to them, I'm going to shut up and try and deal with them. One tip that I have for Ernstine and Smo is always keep a pillar between you and Smo in every single phase. So in the first phase and the second phase, keep a, keep a pillar between you and Smo. And then just try to deal with Ornstein whichever way you can, honestly. He's, uh... Okay, let's see if we can get a hit in. We can get one hit in. Two hits stagger, so I felt confident trading there. Two hits stagger, so I felt confident trading there. I do not feel confident trading here, however. Woo! Okay, that worked out. And he's coming towards me with his weird thing, and he's gone. Okay, so that's the damage of the halberd helping us out. We are at a good position to deal with Smo. I like to fight him without lock-on because that way I can punish each of his attacks more easily. If I'm locked on, I can't actually sprint around like that and, you know, effectively sprint at him right after the attack. Okay, the butt stomp is very dangerous. We don't want to have to deal with that, so we're just going to roll away. That's why I'm only punishing with one attack, by the way, so that I always have enough stamina to actually get away from him if he does the butt stomp this is perfectly safe I lied I lied it is not perfectly safe every day is something new Caillou all right butt stomp get away from that wait a little bit otherwise the lingering damage will get us and that's smoke wow he caught he punished me I said that's perfectly safe and he goes in and just ruins my day all right, let's take quickly use the Soul of Smo. I think that's eight, no, 12,000, very nice. Okay, anyway, that's Ornstein and Smo. But what I was going to say, it's this is perfectly safe. The reason I said that is because if you're very close to him and he does, okay, so there's, there's two sets of attacks that he can do. One is, uh, well, there's many sets, but the two that I'm uh, gonna talk about are the ones that you can punish more than once, more than one attack. Um, so one is the overhead smash n without a jump that one you can hit him and if he goes for a follow-up attack if you're right up against him like really really close to him 
uh, you can actually keep punishing uh, because the other attack does not hit close to him. And that another one is when he does the one swipe and then follows it up with another swipe, you can punish that one as well. But this time I... Uh, Oh, excuse me, that was a hiccup. Uh, I uh, This time I failed to do so uh, appropriately. Okay, so we're going to go to um, Firelink Shrine, yes. And we're going to place the Lord Vessel right away. Because when we're running with the Black Knight Halberd, what we want to do is we want to immediately go and deal with Seath. Uh, the reason for that is because we want to kill the Crystal Lizards that are in the crystal cave and why do we want to kill those because crystal lizards always drop to guaranteed titanite uh, twinkling titanites and with those with at least two uh two lizards we can actually upgrade our weapon to plus five and once we upgrade our weapon to plus five we have very 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 sexy damage so we're gonna go and do seeth now again, um, I do not do Duke Skip. So what does that mean for this run? It means that first of all, uh, I will die. Guaranteed, at least once in the run. Why is that? That's because uh, the first time you fight Seath, he will kill you. There's no way around that other than Duke Skip or just skipping Seath and using some weird glitches, but that's glitches, right? And like I said, I will not be doing Duke Skip because I think it uh, is too big of a sequence break to make this a legitimate run through. So what am I gonna do about that death? Well, I'm just not gonna count it because it is a developer intended, unskippable death. Okay, got a little bit lucky there. There we go. But yes, we actually even prepared for that death by buying a Purging Stone, which cost us 3,000 souls early on in the game, which is a sizable amount of souls. But that is just the, the cost of doing business, so to speak, when you're not doing Duke Skip. Because there is a chance that I die to, uh, that I get cursed, rather, uh, when I die in that first fight with Seath. And it's not even a fight. You, if you hit him, he just re he regains all of his health. So there's no way to kill him, and you can't get out. So yeah, he just messes you up, and that's it. Okay, now this spot can be a little bit scary, depending on what these hollows do. Path that I'm taking right now, which includes also running up close to the ho hollows is the safest that I've found because that way they won't do the ridiculously quick lunge attack that they do and you can uh, remain safe because if they hit you with that I think two hits from that like if two different ones hit you with that you might even die with our current amount of health so I'd rather not have that happen and also you can get staggered and then the guy with, an air with a bow and arrow can shoot you and then the Channeler can hit you with his uh, spell, and then, you know, and it's just not a good time. This guy's going to block us for a little bit. Now, upcoming is one Crystal Lizard. Bonk. And he's gone. There we go. Oh, and while I'm at it, I'm going to put on the Ring of Sacrifice. So there is a way to avoid getting cursed here. And that is to die to the damage of the explosion attack, or if he does some sort of swings with his arms, but I've not seen him do that yet. Okay, he most often does this first. We're going to get hit by that first part, and then we're going to dodge out. Why? Because curse is building up, and we don't want to die to that, and then get cursed. Because even your corpse will get cursed for whatever reason. Now, what we really want him to do is to gather up energy in like a little ball at his chest. If he does that attack, oh, that's perfect. That is the explosion attack. It's gonna knock us up, and for some reason, these spikes or other crystals on the ground will not actually apply curse to us. So now we get Ring of Revival, which means we get to keep the souls that we have. 5,000 souls isn't much, but you know, may as well keep it. And we're gonna put the blue tear stone ring back on. Now you can't actually hit this guy unless you use a rolling attack or like a jump attack or something. That's why I did that. 
Also, I think we can reinforce the weapon yet again because we did just kill, excuse me, we did just kill a crystal lizard. So we're gonna do that. Open this. When I walk out here, a cinematic triggers and music starts to play in this area. That's the whole idea is that the snake guys turn on some sort of weird gramophone and that makes some mobs at the bottom of this prison thing get really angry and run up this and fight me. But if we use a homeward bone right at the entrance here, as soon as the music starts, well, you can use it at any point, but using a homeward bone basically resets the area and you can, uh, you don't actually have to uh, deal with the pisacas. I think that's what they're called, pisacas or piscas or, or something like that. But basically I'll, I'll show you them when we run next to them. But yeah, you don't have to deal with them. Uh, it saves you some time. They can drop humanity, I believe, but it's like a it's a mediocre chance to drop humanity, and we don't actually need that. We have more than enough humanity to open the Lost Isolus shortcut either way. All right, and these are the Pisakas or Piscas or something like that. Something along those lines is what they're called, and we make sure that they don't come up those stairs and beat us up by uh, using a homeward bone. I'm going to run in. I'm going to backstab each of these snake people. Hopefully I don't get hit right out of the gate. Wonderful attack. Nice thing about backstabs is while you're performing one, they can't actually hit you or hurt you, so that's wonderful. I'm going to grab the key to get out of here and use another homeward bone because it's just a lot faster than running up all the way up those stairs. Alrighty, we're gonna kill these guys because they kind of get in the way sometimes and they can chase us and maybe hit us while we're on the ladder and stuff like that. I just don't want to have to deal with the possibility of that happening so I'm just gonna beat them up and make, our, make my way up here. We have to run through and use the Harry Potter stairs which turn around when you use the... I have no clue what that is, like a when you use the contraption on them. Now, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, you'll see it here in a moment. We're just going to run through. The only enemy that we're, we are going to kill is... Um, we're going to kill a couple of archers and a channeler just so that they don't shoot us while we're... Ow. While we're going through this area. Now, you can see how much damage that does when we don't have armor. So I'm just going to make sure I heal up to full and I don't get surprised by any attacks. This is the channeler we're going to kill. Luckily, a running attack takes, makes quick work of him. I'm going to hug the wall to the left here because otherwise that guy that you saw behind me can actually hit me. And if they tag team me, I could end up dead. I hear I hesitated for a second because you see there's an arrow coming through. And these guys are just relentless. This is the archer, one of the two that we'll be killing. I usually don't get hit by arrows so much when I'm here. This is very, very concerning. But actually, you know what? I'll take it. Hit me now. Don't hit me later when it actually matters. Okay, we're going to immediately roll to try and avoid that. Sometimes he, he has weird timing. Sometimes... Uh, who the hell invited you? Get out of here. It's a private party. Private property. Get the heck out. Yeah, some weird things are going on. Usually, this is much smoother. There's much fewer things that hit me, and there's much uh, fewer things that get in the way. This is very weird. Anyway, uh, today is the day of things that haven't happened before, apparently. All right. Well, we're ready to go into the Crystal Garden, which will take us to the Crystal Cave, which will take us to the Crystal Room, where the Crystal Dragon is hiding his crystal horde, and then we'll take the crystal bonfire back to the... Am I getting carried away? Anyway. Just keep swimming. Alrighty. And one thing we have to remember when we go down here is that we have to make sure to actually um, kill the crystal lizards down there. 
And if you don't know which ones I'm speaking of, I'll show you here in a moment once we get to them. There's actually three crystal lizards that can drop um, blue titanite chunks, one or two, or two green titanite shards, or nothing. And when I say nothing, um, I mean two twinkling titanites, because like I said before, uh, crystal lizards will always drop two twinkling titanite. Always, always, always. Even if it's the only thing they drop, they'll always drop it. All right, ignore that one. We jump down here, and then they're hidden in a room back here. Now one of them starts to immediately peace out. We got him this time. Sometimes you won't get him, but as long as you kill at least two, you should be perfectly fine, because you just need four more twinkling titanite to actually upgrade the Black Knight Halberd to uh, plus five, and that's what we're going for here. Now, if you're feeling very brave, you can run straight to Seath and actually fight him, but I like to take care of these clams because, uh, I don't know, I'm just not, not a big fan of getting uh, <laughs> getting gangbanged by, by these guys while, uh, while fighting uh, while fighting Seath. Because Seath can be sometimes problematic. Uh, so I'd rather not have to deal with these guys alongside him. Because these guys, they will, they will absolutely murder you. They will two-shot you. Easy mode. Maybe three, but I've seen them two-shot me because I have died while just clearing them out. That's why I'm doing all these weird maneuvers where I just jump attack them. Because when I jump attack them, I know that they're going to get staggered. Even a regular hit will stagger them, but the reason I don't just, uh, whatchamacallit, that I don't just uh, keep hitting them is because if you over, if you hit them while they're already staggered, they're not going to get staggered again. And if you do the jump attack, then hit them, and then try to hit them again, between that second and third hit, they're actually going to have a window to do one of their attacks. And if it's their quicker attack, most likely they will, they will be able to hit you. And I'd rather not get hit by them, because they can knock you up into the air, especially with my lack of poise, because I have no armor on. That will be, uh, I don't want to have to deal with all of that, so... I just back away after doing the first running attack like this. There we go. And then I try to go in for another running attack, because two running attacks will kill them. Otherwise, I just hit them with a regular attack and follow it up. Quick bonk. And another quick bonk. There we go. Now, if you didn't, don't, didn't get the, um, the crystal lizards, these guys will drop twinkling titanite a single piece or purging stones or both at the same time that's rare though uh, so you maybe you can make up your lack of uh, twinkling titanites with these guys but your best bet is the crystal lizards because it's just guaranteed so just try and get those and you should be fine alrighty we're ready to deal with Seath the idea is that we want to run away from him obviously we want to break the crystal because that keeps him keeps him alive what we want to do is we want him to, to do an attack that's good for us. He's doing that right now. The reason this is good for us is because... Uh, okay, we want to get away from this. This might be cutting it a little bit close. Should be fine, okay. Wait for these to start breaking, then run back in. Hopefully he gives us another good attack. And it doesn't matter anymore because he's gone. Okay. So three bars of stamina should take care of him unless you whiff a bunch, which has happened to me. Has happened to me, so do not be ashamed if you whiff. All right, I'm gonna wait for wait for the souls, and we're going to make sure this is very important actually that we leave twenty two thousand souls. There we go, twenty five or not twenty two, sorry, twenty thousand souls. Uh, the reason we're leaving 20,000 souls is because we want to go to Undead Parish. And we want to buy the Crest of Artorias. Because we're going to go and we're going to deal with Sif. Oh, I'm just going to take a quick rest here. Because after Sif, we're going to homeward. We're going to... Uh, well, actually, never mind. I did that rest for no reason. I wasn't thinking this through properly, but anyway, we're going to buy the uh, Crest of Artorias and head out. It's 
Let's see what he does. I'm just gonna roll because his range is redonkulous. It's some, uh, those are some licorice levels. And that's an inside joke that I just did in a commentary. Now, a friend of mine and I have a joke that instead of saying ludicrous, we say licorice. I don't know why. We're just, we're weird and we find that funny, so. Yeah. Anyway, you come here often? No? How come I don't see you around here? All right. Take care of these guys. And we're off to the races. We're gonna grab the uh, bonfire here and sit at it so that we can reset with a homeward bone after we kill Moonlight Butterfly. Just gonna activate this gate real quick. And there we go. Take a quick seat. Wonderful. And we're off to Moonlight Butterfly. Now, if you don't remember, we're killing Moonlight Butterfly in this run, even though it's any percent, because uh, we want to get the Divine Ember. The Divine Ember is located in the tower after the Moonlight Butterfly boss area. So we kill the Moonlight Butterfly, we grab the Ember, then we turn our Battle Axe into a Divine Battle Axe. And using the Divine Battle Axe, we'll make it so that um, we can kill Nido easier. Why is that the case? Because when you kill the skeletons that are in the Nido boss fight with him, when you kill them with a divine weapon, they don't actually respawn anymore. So we're just going to make use of that. I'm going to bonk them with the divine battle axe, plus five preferably. And that'll take care of them relatively quickly. And we'll be able to deal with the, with the fight that way. His fighting Nido is, uh, it's not particularly hard, but his, uh, his, uh, his little henchman will uh, stagger you sometimes at the worst possible time, which is, I find it funny because he can actually kill those, uh, those same skeletons that he's fighting next to. So, that's fun. Make sure you make the fight easier for you. Now you'll notice I'm just blocking the fast moving projectiles that it fires. And the slow moving ones, I am just rolling through once they get close enough. Uh, the reason for the roll through is because I could block them, but they just do a lot of damage and they're very easy to dodge through. So I prefer dodging through them so I don't have to actually use an Estus here or anything like that. This fight is essentially just you waiting for the butterfly to do exactly this. And then you just go to town. Four hits takes care of her. If you do a running attack, it might be uh, the running attack and then two R1s, but otherwise it's uh, four hits. Okie dokie. We're gonna go grab the, the Divine Ember and then we're gonna peace out with a Homeward Bone. There we go. Homeward Bone to the last bonfire you rested at. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. And we can actually get another level, I think. Ah, oh, just enough. Just enough souls. Uh, we're going to get Vitality to 25. And I think I won't put any more points after 25 into Vitality. Maybe. I'll see. I'll see how I feel. At this point, it really doesn't, doesn't matter if you play well enough. Obviously, if you play well enough, you can never get hit or never take any damage. Just look at Squillakilla. But... Uh, for, for what I consider well enough, if you have uh, 25 vitality, you're doing quite well. You should be able to survive a hit or two, even with no armor on. Uh, that bandit, he, he wants me. He is angry. Alright, we're heading over to Sif. The best thing to do with Sif is, well, other than just practicing so you know how to dodge, like how to time your dodges against her attacks. Uh, the best strategy in general that I've found is to get right up underneath her. Uh, that way, pretty much none of her attacks can hit you. Ideally, you dodge through an attack and you end up underneath her, and then you can punish her with one or two hits while she's uh, finishing off the rest of her attack animation. Alright, 
there we go. After we kill Sif, we do want to grab the Hornet Ring in the back because we'll be parrying Gwyn to death. Alrighty. I stopped there for a second so that I have some stamina to get back. Whew. She came at me quick. Alright, slightly delayed dodge there. Or, yeah, slightly delayed dodge so that the attack doesn't hit me. Gonna drink here. As she's kind of stuck in her little AI loop, we're gonna punish with running attacks. Oh, that was pretty bad. I did not expect. Whew! That was close. I almost got killed by Limping Sif. I'm sorry. I feel bad when I killed the big puppy. But she was trying to murder me. So. That is my excuse. I don't want to get murdered by no big dog. Okay. Now we're going to immediately put on the Covenant of Artorius because I don't want to fall into that pit and just end up dying. That would be very anticlimactic. And before we level up or anything, we're going to go back to... No, not there. Undead Parish. There we go. Why am I going to Undead Parish? Well, we did just kill Moonlight Butterfly for the Divine Ember. So while I'm in the area, I may as well go over there and uh, actually turn the battle axe into a divine weapon. So before you can turn a, a weapon into a divine weapon, obviously you first have to give Andre the ember. Then you need to reinforce that weapon into, oh, that's, I don't need 50, I just need eight. Thank you though. Um, you need to get that weapon to plus five. Oh, I actually forgot to upgrade the Black Knight Halberd. Silly me, but it does so much damage that it didn't even matter, you see that? Anyway, now that the Battle Axe is plus five, we can turn it into a divine one. And we have maybe some more Green Titan Knight Shreds. One more. Okay, so we are at plus two. Now, I did mention that we should get it, if we can, we should get it to plus five. How are we going to do that if we're all out of Green Titan Knight Shreds? Well, you can feed blue, red, or white Titan Knight chunks to, hmm, to Frampt, and he'll turn them into uh, three Green Titan Knight Shreds per chunk. So we're going to feed him three three colored chunks and that'll that'll get us uh, the green titanite shards that we're missing now i'm debating whether i want to get a vitality or endurance i feel comfortable with the current amount of endurance that i have so maybe just go for more vitality look at how much we're missing a thousand souls and i know exactly why because we haven't used these two so i'm going to use this one i'm going to use this one this is suboptimal, by the way. I should have used these already and stuff like that, but I'm just trying to enjoy the run. Ah, I'm so close to another level. That's unfair. The game is teasing me. Anyway, uh, we are going to go over to Firelink Shrine and we're going to head down into the um, into Lost Isol. Actually, that's the next thing that's up. We save Nido for last because we need to, um, we need to do the first. Wait a second. No, we're not going into Lost Isolith. We're gonna go and deal with the ghosts and the four kings. That's what I was doing. I swear, it's like I just woke up from a nap and I have no clue what's going on. Like, what am I even doing? Anyway, this is a mess. This commentary is a mess. Anyway, we're gonna go down and we're gonna take care of the four kings. Let me take a look-see here. Do I have anything that I need to drop? No, no. Do I need to drop any of these? I can drop the purging stone, I guess. I can drop these two because you cannot apply gold pine resin to a uh, twinkling titanite weapon, and the black knight halberd is such a weapon. Alrighty, man, I keep getting things mi mixed up. I mean, I've only made a, a few mistakes. It's not that big of a deal, but that feels like a it feels like a lot. And the reason I'm so confused is because I only recently made this route. Uh, I've only been through it twice. Um, not deathless, just, just practice runs. Uh, we want to use Transient Curse. So I've only practiced the, the route a little bit. So I don't actually... It's not like grilled into my brain or seared into my brain, whatever you want to call it. Which way I need to go and when I need to go. So yeah, okay, camera didn't decide to try to kill me this time around. 
sometimes the camera gets a little bit wonky there and you almost get uh, you almost get pushed off into the water because the camera decides to change direction and suddenly you're looking a bit to the left instead of straight ahead and uh, you're holding your controller or rather you're you're pushing your analog stick straight forward but the camera moved to the left and now you're suddenly running into the water and you're screaming and you're angry because you're almost done with the run but camera decides to murder you hardest boss in the game camera camera and then right after camera it's gravity <laughs> all right we're gonna wait for the ghost to show up there she is i had to taunt her with some of these bop and she's gone i assume it's a she i don't know they seem vaguely female okay i am surrounded by ghosts we're gonna drink right in their face to establish dominance there we go now with this weapon this isn't as scary if i had a regular halberd i'd be i'd be sweating i'd be sweating so profusely because it's extremely hard to hit them with the regular halberd or the crystal halberd for that matter it's just the move set of that weapon uh it makes it very hard to actually hit the ghosts Okay, so what we're going to do here is we need to shoot Ingward up there. I don't know if you saw him. I'll show you more. More precisely, I'll show him when I shoot him in the face with my bow and arrow. Uh, but we need to shoot him. And before we can safely shoot him, we have to take care of these two guys that are going to that are gonna show up and try to ruin the good time we're having. I'm going to stick their head through the floor. And then I'm going to bonk them. Right to jail. Right away. Bonk. Okay, straight to horny jail. Okay, now we're gonna grab these and it's really actually really really important here That you do get headshots on Igward. Why is that? Because Otherwise, you might not have enough arrows to finish Igward off And I know this fence doesn't have clipping. I'm very grateful that the fence does not have clipping Oh, he's sprinting. Nice. Uh, why is sprinting good? Well, when you're sprinting and you get hit, uh, you actually take more damage. So now we're doing 85 per headshot instead of 60. That makes it even more likely for us to be able to kill him with the amount of arrows that we have. Um, unless you miss multiple times, you should be able to kill him even if it doesn't sprint. So there's no reason to sweat here. Uh, just make sure you shoot him in the head. There we go. We have the key to the seal, we have a full health bar, and we can run straight to the mechanism that opens the gate, which removes the water. We need to do that in order to be able... That's a jump scare if I've ever seen one. I didn't scream because I know that it can possibly happen, but how spooky is that? She just comes out the wall, shimmies around you. Horrifying. Okay. Yes, we need to remove all this water in order to be able to get to the actual bosses or boss. Is it multiple bosses or is it just one boss? It's one boss fight, but it's multiple bosses, right? Like Ornstein and Smo is a boss fight, but it's two bosses, right? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay, we're going to level up and we're going to put another point into vitality because we're just going to be we're going to be a naked tank, aren't we? Okay, we have I see the little blue shoe which is meant to signify abyss walking capabilities. And what I mean by blue shoe is, no, I'm not seeing things. If you look at the, at the uh, stamina bar, right underneath it, there's three icons. The yellow one is from the Ring of Favor and Protection. The green arrows are uh, from the uh, Grass Crest Shield that you see on me. And the blue one is from the uh, Covenant of Artorias. And that lets us go and fight the four kings okay okay uh so we're gonna utilize a little shortcut here that's why i poured it out uh, homeward boned after after getting rid of the water because it's actually safer to use this shortcut that i'm about to use than it is to um to go through the the area as you would usually uh, we don't actually need anything from this area. We're going to pick up some souls, but we don't actually need need them. They're just a nice to have. I'm going to 
do a little ole, walk behind him. Grab that soul. There's another soul over here. There we go. Get ready to dodge this guy. And there we go. Didn't need to dodge because I could space him with the pillar. That's always good. And we're going to dodge to the right immediately. Because sometimes they like to do that, that like stab attack from your back. That'll knock you down into the hole and you might hit one of these little platforms. Land on it. You know, the damage from him, the damage from the falling, you end up dead. Now I'm going to panic check. We do have the ring. Even though I saw the blue icon, I was like, I don't trust you, blue icon. I don't trust no blue shoes. These guys can be tricky. If they use a lot of attacks, I was not heading in the right direction. If they use a lot of attacks that are very annoying, such as this one. This one's the most annoying of them all. Uh, they can waste a lot of your time. And if they waste a lot of your time, another one will actually spawn in. I hate that. I hate that so much. It's very hard to dodge, unless you're already a little bit away from them. Uh, another one can spawn in, and then you have to fight two at the same time, and that's never a fun time. Okay, I'm not going to punish now. I'm going to drink. Okay, the other one has already spawned in. And the first one is that I'm going to keep hitting... The first one died because you can keep actually dealing damage that way. Gotta make sure I don't get hit here. Bonk him once, wait for the next attack. I'm not gonna punish, I'm gonna drink twice. Ah, I'm gonna get punished for drinking. No alcoholics. Okay. I wanna keep my health up just so they don't actually kill me. I'm getting close to the end of the run. Don't wanna risk anything. Okay. It's another one dead. I'm gonna hit the corpse with the stamina that I have left. Okay, we have some breathing time before the next one. Wonderful. Hopefully it doesn't do any uh, any attacks we don't like. That's a good one. Okay. Doesn't matter. It's a small amount of damage. The reason it's a small amount of damage is because it's just the hilt basically hitting you. I'm gonna drink here just to keep healthy. See, his health is still dropping because I'm hitting the place where he died. The reason that's the case is because they have their individual health bars. Once they die, um, those are those. once those are depleted, they die. But the boss health bar uh, doesn't really care about any of that. The boss health bar only cares about, uh, about how many times they're hit. And since their body is still there and you're hitting their body... It counts as if you're still dealing damage to the boss. And that would be four kings. Okay. That was a little dicey. They did some uh, some tricky attacks. Wasted a bunch of my time. Multiple respond at the same time. So it was, you know, a little bit scary. I'm not going to lie. I did get scared for a little bit there. I don't want to have to act as if I wasn't. Okay. Now we're going to Lost Isolith. Again, I apologize. That was just uh, this was my bad. I wasn't thinking. Uh, of the right place. Okay, 30 vitality. Do I go for endurance now? Hmm, question mark. Yeah, let's get some more endurance. Why not? More stamina is never a bad thing. I don't know why I got up when I need to warp to fire link. There we go. Okie dokie. We're gonna take a seat here to have Tenestus in case some stuff goes wrong. We take some fall damage we didn't plan for or anything like that. It's, it can't be a bad thing to have five, Tenestus instead of five. So we may as well just take that quick seat. It only costs us a couple of seconds of our time. And again, this isn't a speed run. It's nice to have it nice and quick, but it is not a speed run. Okay. Gonna do a little wiggle. A wiggle wiggle. This is known to increase uh, favorable RNG by up to 5%. Sometimes even 10, depending on how long you do the wiggling for. Alrighty. Here we go. Uh, we gotta run past these guys again. 
Turns out, in one previous video, I had said that they give you a toxic when they hit you. They do not. They give you poison. Um, if you don't have any armor on, you will most likely get poisoned. Um, unless you're a super, super high level. Uh, because your resistances get increased with each level. And we're not a super, super high level, so I'd avoid getting a... Getting bonked by those guys. Don't need poison before I even get to the bottom of Light Town. Because Lord knows there's enough poison to go around in this place. Well, the reason I'm dodging right here, and I hadn't mentioned that before, is because there's a guy that can shoot you with toxic darts over there. And I don't want to have to deal with toxic on my way over there. It doesn't matter as much at this point. Because we're, we have a lot more health. We have the 10 Estus. We don't have to actually fight anything. But the first time you come down here, you really don't want to get hit by that toxic. Uh, reason being, you don't want to have to use so much Estus when going over to Quelag and your health depleting so quickly while you don't have it as much as we do right now. Also, I didn't mention previously, but if you go behind this branch and like in this general direction that I'm going, you can avoid triggering those guys with the boulders. So you don't have to worry about them being able to hit you. Uh, I have died to them before. So, easiest thing to do is to just take a couple of seconds longer to get to where you're going by going around the tree or branch or root or whatever the heck that is, but yeah. Also, we are done with this. We can put on blue tear stone ring yet again. We'll be putting the hornet ring on once we are in uh, thingy with the stuff. What's it called? Once we are at Gwen. He is the person who we'll be parrying, so we really want the uh, counterattack damage from that. Alrighty, just gonna jump down here. We have enough health to survive it. I hope <laughs> we do. Wonderful. And we're gonna talk to this guy and we're gonna say yes. He only talks once, then you can say yes. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. We are going to go ahead and we're gonna use the Firekeeper Soul. That gives us five humanity. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use another two humanity. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use another 21 humanity. Presto pronto, 30 humanity has been achieved. Alrighty, and then we're going to talk to this lady, enter her covenant. We would have entered her covenant had I clicked yes, or not clicked, but pressed, I guess, since we're not using a mouse and keyboard for this run, which I think would be more impressive for me than actually completing the game without dying, because I just, I hate playing this without a controller. We're going to offer her 30 humanity, so what does this do? This lets us actually get through and use a uh, shortcut to Lost Isolith which uh, will save us a lot of time and we won't have to fight two bosses so we're gonna we're gonna head on over there There is not much to say here, other than uh, there's a couple of spots. Well, there, there's uh, there's two enemies along the way who actually could potentially get us killed. Maybe more, but the ones I've had trouble with um, are the Taurus Demon blocking the way to Demon Fire Sage. And I'll point him out when we get to him. He's the only Taurus Demon we actually deal with. And uh, the Titanite Demon after the shortcut. This guy should be easy to dodge. Just if you see him do that attack, delay your dodge. It takes longer for him to swing than you think. And if he does the jump attack, well, good luck. Just dodge it. Just dodge it, lol. I know. Professional advice over here. <laughs> but yes, just learn to time the dodges and you should be perfectly fine. 
We're going to pick up these souls. There's no reason not to. Every bit of souls we can pick up is always helpful. I'm going to go ahead and bonk this guy real quick. Grab this. The reason I killed that guy is so that I can safely pick up that soul without him frying me to a crisp. Now this is the Titan. Oh, jeez, the Titan. The Taurus Demon. That attack is the one we actually want because we can just roll through his legs, and it's a lot safer and a lot easier to time than the other attacks he does. If he does the other attacks, make sure you time it right because even if his hit doesn't kill you, he might push you back into those. Um, floating guys that breathe fire they might finish you off or even worse he'll push you close to that big worm and that worm will ruin your day I guarantee it might even break your gear which is even worse all right now we want to kill one of these bugs I believe it's this one right here perfect because it gives us the sunlight maggot. So what does the sunlight maggot do? Well, it lets us actually... That's the wrong helmet. It lets us actually produce light. Why is that even a thing? Well, because Tomb of the Giants uh, is pretty rough without a light. There we go. Another two twinkling titanite. In case you were missing some, you can get some here. You can also get extra green titanite shards. Or you could get a red titanite chunk or two. And that way you can... Uh, Maybe get, uh, if you missed some previous uh, crystal lizards, you can get uh, the extra green titanite shards from that to upgrade your divine weapon. Now I'm going to bonk this guy. While he's turning around, I'm going to start running. There we go, that worked out. I'm going to run along this side of the path, and if I hear him casting lightning, I'm going to run to the other side. That way, he won't hit me, but... He was just trying to he was just trying to catch up. He started casting there at the end, but once you're down the stairs, the lightning should not be able to hit you anymore, so you're fine to keep going. Alrighty. Now, there is a uh, chaos witch down here. I'm gonna bonk her real quick and if you just mash the R1 button, she does not have enough time to recover and you can just finish her off. Okay, now uh, we, what we want to do here is we want to put on all of this fire resistance. It has very good fire resistance, as you can see. 49 and stuff like that. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because we're going to do the fire bomb strat for this boss. And we're going to grab the fire bombs for that. That would be useful. And in that strat, sometimes when you're going to the actual bed of chaos, to the bug in the middle... Um, you may have to, uh, whatchamacallit, you, you may have to dodge or you might get hit by um, some fire attack. What the heck? Okay. Sorry, tree. Anyway, you might get hit by some fire attacks. And if you get hit by those, that can hurt quite a bit. If two of them hit you at the same time, it might be uh, game over. So, no reason to risk it. Now, some people start from right side and go to left side. I did it right side, then left side in my previous deathless attempt. This time I'm going to do it this way around because I actually have more trouble hitting this side than I do the other one. So we're going to yeet. That's one of them dead. We're going to look at the other one where it needs to be thrown, right over there. Hopefully that hits it. And there we go. Switch to fist. And just keep rolling. This is the attack we were worried about. We managed to even avoid it. Perfect. This thing has one health as far as I know. So just beat it up and you should be fine. Okay. And we can take the armor back off. We can put the weapon back on. Yes, I know. I can't use it efficiently. Light the bonfire. Wait for the souls. There they are. And now we can put some more levels in. Let's see. We're going to go for endurance to 30. We won't be able to quite reach it, but that's quite all right. Uh, I'm going to warp to um, Firelink Shrine. And now we're ready for Nido. Nido is the last Lord Soul we get uh, before uh, going to Gwyn. Of course, we have to kill Pinwheel as well. Let's not forget uh, one of the uh, one of the most well, let's say most interesting bosses in the game. We're not gonna make fun of 
of, of poor Pinwheel. I have actually been killed by Pinwheel, believe it or not. In New Game, I think 3 or something like that. It was some higher New Game. I mean higher, relatively higher New Game. Uh, where he has a bunch more health and he also has a bunch more damage. I got hit by 3 of them at the same time, like the clones and stuff. And that did not work out for me. We're gonna break uh, these at least three blue titanite chunks. No more than that should be required. And then we have enough to actually upgrade our divine battle axe to to plus five. We're gonna do that at the next bonfire that we sit down at here in the catacombs. At the first summoner slash whatever the heck those guys are. I think they're called summoners. I'm not sure though. The dudes that throw the fireballs, that have the skull lanterns that they drop sometimes, you know? Those guys. Alright. Oh, I was hoping to avoid that fall damage, but oh well. Runs over. I took fall damage. This guy, sometimes this guy is ready for you. Sometimes he just kind of stares at you as you... Bonk him. Alrighty. Whoops, didn't mean to dodge. Or backstep, I should say. We're gonna use all of these. There we go. Might be able to get an extra level in. We'll see. I'm going to first reinforce the Divine Battle Axe. Make sure I have all the souls I need to do that. There we go. Plus five. And then we're going to level up. Yeah, I can get a level in. Uh, yeah, endurance to 30. After this, I'm just going to put points into health. Okie dokie. Well. Time for catacombs. We are going to be dropping through the catacombs. Okay. Dodge that. Block that. Ooh, don't get knocked off. That would, that would be bad. This, and then roll to the right mash the roll button so that we can immediately drink because these skulls will ruin your day if you're not careful they have ruined my day keep on chugging grab this it's a thousand souls but you never know now before we go down i'm going to switch to black fire bombs Whew, that was a little too close okay i made sure to lock on to this guy so that i can do this Okay, we really want to make sure that we kill the the two. Uh... Okay, last last good fireball or fire bomb, I should say. Let's see if this guy walks away. Let's see if we can get this here. There we go. We got the bone wheels. That's what matters. Okay. These guys are dead. They're going to respawn, but not before I get to pinwheel, so we can get going. So remember, I picked those five firebombs up back, all the way back in Undead Parish. That's why I picked them up, because... Not in Undead Parish, excuse me, in Undead Burg. That's why I picked them up, because I knew I would need black ones to kill these guys. Um, the black ones uh, killed them in one hit. The regular ones killed them in uh, two hits, so... Ooh, that hurt. There we go. Just gonna make sure that we're at full health so we don't get hit by some sort of skeleton or something over there. Let's see if we can get a Mask of the Child here. Oh, nope. You know, for as long as I've been doing these runs, I haven't gotten a single Mask of the Child. I'm just very cursed with RNG on that. Put on the sunlight maggot so we can still see. Can I still fast roll? Yes, I can. Thanks to all that endurance I've been putting on. That's wonderful. Sometimes you gotta dodge here. This time we don't. Take the two slides down. Then there's two big skellies over here. Here's a one. Here's a two. And a one. And a two. And a... There we go. And we are at the bonfire for Tomb of the Giants. We're making good progress. Another level up is possible. That's wonderful. Vitality, like I had said. I'm just quickly going to see if I can put on some extra armor. 
Now, why would I? Oh, I can't. But maybe, maybe I can put on gloves. Gloves aren't as heavy. There we go. Now we have gloves. Woo. Now, the reason I'm putting that on is maybe we don't get instant toxic if we have the gloves on. Oh. Now, if you saw me walk there, that's not because I chose to. It's because my controller, my left analog stick, likes to drift a little bit, which means sometimes, even though I'm pushing it all the way, I'm pushing, pushing it to the limit, it likes to act as if I wasn't. So, basically, it's a big, beanie, big meanie poo poo face. Okay. Keep making my way through here, and we're safe. Okay. Well, it's Dark Souls. You're never actually safe, but you know what I mean. I made it down to the part where there's no actual enemies that'll chase me like that. Okay, we're gonna take these two off and see. Maybe now I can fast roll with that. No, game doesn't like me fast rolling. Maybe with this, it's 0.5e. Ah, there we go. Now we, ha we have a skirt on. We're good. Skirt might protect us from them being toxic. From their toxic traits. Who knows? Maybe we walk in there. Nito starts gaslighting us. What do you mean I'm not listening to you? Alright. This guy might shoot us. I'm going to listen for... Okay. I heard the cling. Which means that the arrow hit the wall across from him. And it didn't go down the hallway. Sometimes it goes down the hallway. And that can be a bit of a... A bit of trouble for us. I'm just gonna spam roll to get through here. And now we can put on the Divine Battle Axe and get ready to deal with the guys down there. Okay. Hopefully he doesn't spam the knock-up attack, and if he does, hopefully I can avoid it. Good one heavy takes care of that. Oh no, I missed him. Alright, there we go. Just gonna switch over to Black Knight Halberd. And uh, start dancing with Nito. Alright, that was a little bit close, not gonna lie, but that worked out. Playing it a bit risky with the stamina management. I have no clue what he's doing because I'm not in front of him. But he's gone. Okay. It's time for Gwyn. You know it, baby. Wonderful. I'm gonna wait for that bonfire to show up. Maybe use the soul of the hero. 1,000 souls. Watch the speed of the difference between getting a level or not. <laughs> All right. Light the bonfire. Level up. Just more points into vitality. I don't know why I got back up when I need to warp back to Firelink. And there we go. All right, it's time for Nito. Uh, Nito? Yes, it's time for Nito. Now that we've killed Nito, we can go kill Nito again. It's time for Gwyn, is what I meant to say. All righty. Got to remember to put on the Hornet Ring. It has happened that I forget to do so. And, oh no. I'm kidding. All planned. If he's asleep, right, once you talk to him, once you place the Lord Vessel with him. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to offer souls. There we go. Once you place the Lord Vessel with him, you can just run past him and drop in on your own. And you'll, uh, you'll end up over here. You can grab the 20 Estus by sitting down after offering the souls. And let's get cracking. I'm just going to be running past the uh, Black Knights over here. I don't want to have to deal with any of those guys. Um, some of them have some questionable attacks that sometimes can hit you, but this one's being generous. I don't have to dodge anything. I can just keep running. Just keep swimming. This guy, however, 
I am going to dodge no matter what I think he's doing because he is full of surprises. He has definitely surprised me before. Alright. And it is time for the one that we run past. Sometimes his attack will nick you, like in the back. Oh, that camera. Camera hardest boss. Whew. That almost sent me flying off into the abyss. Well, it's not the abyss, but off uh, into certain death. Oh, geez. That would have been one hell of a way to lose the run. To get hit by... Well, to get hit by... To fall to your death in front of Gwyn. That would have been... Uh, honestly, that would have been funny. That would have been so funny. All right, let's shut up and parry. That worked out. I didn't get the parry in, but that worked out. Whew. There you go. There you go. That's the Black Knight Halberd run. Another one with a commentary. I still haven't done the one without commentary yet, but I will I will get around to it. I will post a video without commentary for people who enjoy to watch this without me blabbering all over it constantly. I really want to check how long this took with all the mistakes I did. I want to make sure. I want to I want to find out how long it took me to beat the game without dying. Okay, load game. Deathless Black Knight Halberd. 1 hour 44 minutes 38 seconds. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Uh, it's faster than my other run by a little bit. Um, the other commentary run by a little bit. Uh, about 6-7 minutes and like that. Pretty nice. Okay. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you, you learned some stuff. Uh, maybe you can use this sort of routing in uh, in your own playthroughs or your own uh, Deathless uh, challenge runs. If you do record one, please do let me know. I would love to see, especially if you used anything from this run or this, uh, this commentary. I'd love to know that. That would be super cool. Anyway, uh, I'm definitely not Vlad, and this was the Deathless run of Dark Souls Remastered uh, with the Black Knight Halberd.